want to welcome those of you who are watching the Daytona qualifying. Derek Clark, Richie Schuler here in Laramie, Wyoming, as we have Utah State and Wyoming going against each other. Not much has happened early on in this game. Didn't miss much. Only 2-2. Teams feeling each other out thus far. A couple turnovers. Very slow feel to this game, Richie, so far. So far. But what I'm looking for here, and viewers should as well, Utah State's number one, great Osibar from England is dynamic down inside the paint. He averages 19 and a half points per game in Mountain West play. Expect for him to get a lot of back to the basket opportunities on the offensive end of the floor here. He was battling down there, but he could, could, could not come up with the offensive rebound on the Ian Martinez miss. This Wyoming group is a team that shoots over 37% from behind the three on the season. It's one of their strengths, as well as getting to the free throw line and converting those free throws, about 16 a game. Wenzel to the basket. Early substitutions here. Wenzel came in, and so did Cam Manyow for head coach Linder. So going to the bench early here, see if he can find something. Oh, Brown's doubled. Oh, nearly lost his footing. Almost traveled. There he is, going outside the big man. And nice left-handed finish there by the great one, Osibor, inside. I mean, he is 31st in the NCAA at 58% from the field. He's so efficient when he gets the ball down inside. Looking to see if Wyoming will look to double-team him just a little bit. You see right here, they're going to go high-low down inside to Osibor. That little pump fake did, did the wonder right there. And then the left-hand finish. So there's Martinez who committed the personal foul, and that's his first. Wenzel against harassment on defense. Oh, that's great penetration. And he goes to the rack and scores. Now look for Utah State to utilize the ball screen quite a bit. Here's that horns action I talked to about a moment ago. Darius Brown can go either way. He decides to go to the left one dribble and knocks it through. Darius Brown is cooking thus far. Came over from Montana State, as we mentioned, also spent a lot of time. Most of his career was spent at Cal State Northridge, where he was an excellent player for Mark Godfrey. And he brought it over here with head coach Sprinkle as sprinkling in some magic from the outside is Wenzel. And he's cooking early on for the Cowboys. It's the Wenzel and Brown show right now. A lot of contact, no whistle. Good job down inside on Osibor, kind of fronting him down inside is Manuel. Martinez, the indecision. Uh-oh, here he goes again. Not quite, but a earned rebound and an earned foul drawn on the hustle play by Mason Walters, drawing the foul on Isaac Johnson. About a month ago, back in Utah State's house in Logan, 20th ranked Utah State at the time, beat them pretty soundly, but final score not necessarily indicative of how close the game was in the first half. They only had a two-point lead, but when Utah State came out of the break, they scored the first 11 points out of the break and ran away in the second half to outscore the Cowboys 48 to 26. Great Osibor was all over that game. It had his fingerprints in the run. And at that point, Richie, that was their 14th straight win. It was a domination in the second half by Utah State. So if Wyoming wants to keep it close, it's imperative that they get out to a good start. And they've got out to a good start thus far. I agree with not? you. Yeah, and Utah State went on to win 15 straight games before they finally got knocked off. But if Utah State wants to win on the road here, they got to keep Wyoming off the foul line, and they've got to prevent these three-point shots. They're a ter terrific three-point shooting team. And, and what Utah State needs to do is dominate in the paint like they did when they were in Logan. 48 oh. points to 22 for Wyoming in that game. As that, that's Darius Brown again, by the way. He has got scoring on his mind as he's got seven points early on to lead the Utah State Aggies. And here's what they love to do. Defense and transition. Oh, and Osibor a little off the mark with his pass. Oh, look at Griffin twirling around, and he loses the ball. Lots of turnovers for both of these teams. This is really a feel-out process, four combined. 
So Red trying to go inside to Osibor. I tell you, Martina or Manuel is doing a great job in fronting him, not allowing him to catch the ball. A lot of people guard the post in different ways, but if you're undersized, one of the best ways to guard the post is to sit on the offensive player's lap as they're trying to post up. Wide open three, that time's off the mark. Darius Brown again, and oh, they leave Osibor alone inside. Three no good from the corner. And Richie, that's the second time I've seen a three-pointer fired by Utah State where the player hesitates before pulling the trigger, and then when they pull the trigger, they're completely out of rhythm. That happens. Yeah. Oh, strong take by Manio, and he's got the end one. I love this freshman right here. Big time motor, plays hard. He shows a lot of flashes of being a great player. Started some games in the non-conference portion of the schedule. Now has embraced coming off the bench. Great job attacking the middle, using the left hand, and finishing with the and one. That foul goes against Khalifa Sacco, who checked into the game for the first time for Utah State off the bench. And uh, Richie, Manuel's going to have a big role for this Wyoming team, especially in this game. He's asked not only to do things like that, but also to hold the great Osibor in check. That is no small task for him to be asked, but and I think Linder's got a lot of a lot of confidence in the young man. Yeah, he did start tonight, but he has come off the bench in most contests. Another hesitation. I like this ball screen action. Darius Brown the second. He's so dynamic. Over six assists per game. If he's not open, he's going to kick it out to an open player. Here's a Duje attacking. And he scores inside. You know, the last time these two teams played, that was a big deal for Utah State. They outscored Wyoming 48 to 22 in the paint. So Wyoming's got to try to keep him out. Oh, what a pass down low. Oh, and he smokes the dunk, but he's fouled. That would have been a nice highlight reel as a great pass from the top to Caden Powell, who just couldn't finish. I mean, look at this right here. Combs pass. That would have been a monstrosity if he had knocked that shot down with a dunk inside the paint. And how about threading the needle, Kale Combs, the vision, putting that ball on a silver platter right exactly where Powell can catch, receive, and complete. And Powell knocks down the first free throw. 68% from the line on this season. And Powell, this is a guy, this is his first year as a full-time starter. Played 28 games last year. He's also going to be a big part of the inside game of Wyoming going forward. Foul was on Templin. He's in the game for Sprinkle. Good ball movement by Utah State, but here comes Brown to get it. Oh, that's a travel. I tell you, Wyoming is doing a superb job of preventing the ball from getting inside the paint. Early on, it went down there a little bit. But we saw Manuel guarding down inside when Osibor is in the game. He's out of the game now. And now for uh, down inside, you, you have some more players down inside preventing the ball from going inside to uh, the big fella down. Who's in there right now for the Walters? Here's Cott, scoreless so far. You expect that to change immediately. There he goes. Oh, great dump down to Powell. The pump fake, and he's got another air one. Caden Powell, the sophomore, has got it working early on for the Cowboys. And he's whose name I couldn't think of right there. He was guarding in downside the paint on the defensive end, so Sacco couldn't get it inside. And then he gets the ball on the offensive end and makes a great play, great dish by a Quell Cott to see an open teammate around the block. The KG pump fake drew the foul on Darius Brown. And that is the 15th foul for Utah State. Converts the and one. This is exactly the kind of start you wanted here at home for Wyoming if you have any hope of upsetting the number one team in the Mountain West. Martinez curling around. Uh, he doesn't want to shoot out there. He's going to try and get it inside. And falls left. Spun into double coverage, but he was bailed out by a hack and foul on the arm.
And that's Powell. So he picks up his second Richie. So now decision time for Jeff Linder, and he's going to bring in Oleg Koyanets into the game. And we may not see Powell for a long time here. It's unfortunate. He was cooking down there on sure both ends. Was. Utah State. This time he doesn't hesitate. And you see what happens when guys shoot with confidence. Right down the middle, Josh Aduje strokes it from downtown. And he has not been a great three-point shooter this season, but a wide-open look like that, you got to take full advantage. Good mid-range right here. That's Mason Walters again. And he is a very important piece for Wyoming. He's back from injury, missed the first 10 games with a thumb injury, but he has started every single game since he's come back. Second straight three by Aduje, not quite. Koyanets coming in, getting the offensive rebound. And also drawing a loose ball foul. Looks like that was on Osibor. These, these Cowboys really are, really are playing like they really want to win this game. And that's all you can ask for as a head coach. Give me effort. Give me fight. Give me fire. Don't lay down to the number one team just because they have a one on the side of their statistics. Nice move there inside and another foul. Koyanet's doing a good job of faking to the left and then going over his right shoulder. Anytime you do a shot fake, pass fake, pump fake, anything like that, it gets the defense out of position just a little bit. An opportunity for a couple of free throws. Look at this play here for Wyoming. A wide open shot, the kick out top of the key. Great job, Aduje from the top. Welcome back to Laramie, where the Wyoming Cowboys lead this one early on, 18 to 14. And Wyoming is a much better team on their home floor than they are on the road, as you see some of their splits. But, you know, we were talking to head coach Jeff Linder about why he thinks that is. And something he was saying, Richie, is that a lot of that he thinks has to do with not only just the competitiveness of the Mountain West in general, but he feels like the, the difficulty of the opponents that they faced on the road has contributed a lot to some of those splits. Well, I tell you what, yeah, I mean, and I don't think it's been very easy for Wyoming. This is the fourth game in a row where Wyoming's had a home game, a fourth home game in a row, that they've had a team come in that's been top 25 or getting votes for top 25. You know, Utah State just fell out of the top 25. They're 26 if you look at the votes. They're right behind. But... I, I, they're, just, they're just really good at home. They shoot the ball better at home. I think everybody plays a little more comfortable when they're on their own home court. But Utah State, you know, as great as they've been, 11-1 at home, they're 4-0 in neutral locations. On the road, they're just 5-3, and three, uh, which above 500 on the road is usually pretty good. But, you know, we talk a little bit about I talked to, We talked to one of their coaches before the game during shoot-around. He said it's almost psychological. You know, you got to have that road mentality a little bit. And... Um, you know, certainly they're going to have to bring that here to keep pace in the Mountain West and keep that sole possession of first place. If they lose tonight here, they're in a three-way tie with New Mexico and San Diego State. Koyanets missed those two free throws and averages just 11 minutes per game. Probably going to play a little bit more with the foul trouble for Powell, but fortunately there for Wyoming could not convert those two points at the line. Utah State has not looked fluid at all offensively. Here's a good look at it. In and out. This is a Utah State team who is second in the Mountain West and 10th overall in the NCAA in field goal percentage. You got to think it's just a matter of time before they get going. Falls left, probing. Here's Osibor is going to get a one-on-one. -on -one. They don't double. He picks up his dribble. And a nice cut inside there. The big man found him. That's Scoring a, inside is Aduje. Really good interior pass, but mo more impressive. Aduje moving off the ball right to the point where it can be delivered to him. Richie, are you surprised they let Osibor work one-on-one -on -one there? That's a nice move there by Kogan that's getting to the rim. I don't think so. He caught the ball like 15 feet away from the basket. They're not letting him get the ball really much on the blocks. Yeah, that was something that they were working on game plan wise and shoot around. I watched their game against Nevada uh, just a couple of games ago, and Utah State had pumped the ball down inside to Osibor. 
I want to say like five times in the first three or four possessions. A couple of times in one or two of those possessions. Boy, if Darius Brown keeps going like this, he may have his career high in one half. He's 11.2 points per game and is already at nine points. Only missed one shot. He's the leader of this team. I, he gave it to him too late. Oh, and, wow. Yeah, great hustle there by Mason Walters throwing it off. And Aggie's back and somehow coming up with it. Here's firing away again. It's Brendan Wenzel. Over and over, he's stroking it from downtown. That is his 600th career point. Shot clock is winding down. Do they see it? He does. He shoots Beautiful. it. He sticks. Great mid-range shot by Josh Aduje. Here's a young man that also started early in the season quite a bit. Now, he has really embraced the six-man role, doing his job. Been a really successful run now for Utah State as a result. And Coach Sprinkle was talking about him in our shoot-around as well, trying to – so many good players on this team, it's – he he wants to get Josh more minutes, but with all these great players and talent, as shot clock's winding down, this is the guy to shoot it. Not quite, but Sprinkle is very, very fond of a lot of his guys, Richie, and he, he laments the fact that he just isn't able to get as many guys that he wants on the floor as he can, but... So Wyoming doing a great job in transition, getting some three-point shots, and this is a really yep. good repertoire here for... Aduje. I mean, he's a guy that can really drive the ball. He's a bit of a below average three point shot, but he makes you respect him because he can pull up with that mid range shot. Can't really tell from today. Shooting with confidence. After that one shot where he hesitated earlier in the game, now he's just letting it fly, and it's looked a lot better for him. Now he's trying to play bully ball in the post against Griffin. Goes up over him. Almost. Wyoming's running again. Here's Cott. He's been quiet so far. Manyao in no man's land. Get it to a guard. Does that. Griffin has also been quiet. Manyao one-on-one -on -one against Osibor. Tries to take him. And that's not going to work as Osibor stood his ground and blocked it right back into his grill. Great defense there by the great one inside. Great job by Osibor, not just a great offensive player, terrific rebounder. Look at how he plays with his chest and his hands out and hands up. That's textbook defense down inside the paint. Back with you here from Arena Auditorium here in Laramie, Wyoming, where the Cowboys have gotten off to a good start here, up 23 to 20. And here's a look at the bunch of teams here that are in the Net top 50. That's six of them. Six teams there in the Mountain West. As we get a chance, Richie, to see just a great league. And Utah State, take a look at what they've done in this great league. Eight and three in the Mountain West. And 20 and four overall. And Richie, they very well could, should be really nine and two. But they had that one bad loss in Nevada. And Coach was saying to us in the shoot around that he just thought Nevada outplayed them. But... And that's the one loss that no. we think that cost them top 25. I, I, 26 is still good, but I, th that's the one loss that, you know, they, they would like to have back. Very hesitant to say Nevada's a bad loss because they're a terrific basketball team under Steve Alford. I, I think they're a team that deserves to be in the NCAA tournament. But, yes, that, that was the one that did knock them out of the top 25. Uh, but Steve Alford's group is fantastic, and they have been peaking here at the right time in February with some really big wins here down the stretch. Now, I will say it's a great shot there and pull up by Sam Griffin, and their leading scorer. I will say that back in 2013, the Mountain West had five teams go to the big dance. And this year, very realistic that six of them could advance. That is amazing. And that's a good point you make, Richie. Nevada, absolutely a talented team, but you never want to lose because the coach thinks that the other team outplayed you with effort. If they lose because the other team is just more talented, had a great night that night, that's one thing. But Sprinkle felt that his team was outplayed. 
Griffin got on the board for the first time, the last time down the floor, and he's trying to get hot again. And there he goes. Not quiet for very long. Sam Griffin, their star player. Showing it right now, and now the Cowboys get turnover. No, they don't. Almost got a turnover. Here's Osabor to the basket, and he's hacked hard and fouled. Boy, that was a swing right there, Richie. Well, it's the Sam Griffin show, is it not? Off the bounce, pull up mid-range, hand in his face. That's what he can do. Coach says he is a professional scorer. And then you're going to give him space? Hand down, man down, doesn't matter how big the big fella is guarding you. You're going to knock down that three-point shot from deep. So here's Asabor back to the free-throw line. That foul went against Cod, who committed his first. And Bridge that off the back iron. We talked about it early on. Sam Griffin averages almost 18 a game. He's third in the Mountain West. Now, at Utah State down in Logan, he was held to seven points. He was three of nine from the field. Utah State did a great job of locking him down. It was a big part of the reason why they came out victorious. You know Griffin has something to prove tonight. Two free throws missed there by Osibor. Yeah, this is a guy who was a born professional scorer. Here he goes again. Oh, he's got aggressive mindset on now. A little sharp, and look who's there on the rebound. It's Walters. And it's that shot fake. Look, Walters got the rebound. If he went straight up, he wouldn't have got the shot off. That little pump fake, making the right play, gets the defense in the air in Wyoming's crowd on their feet. Look at this play by Roberts. Look, look at Walters. A little pump fake. Look what he did. He got Aduje in the air and created a little bit of space to go up and knock down the put-back layup. And I tell you, where Utah State just dominated inside the paint the first go-around, now it's all Wyoming down inside. As now the scripts have flipped a little bit in that category. One area I know Utah State was concerned about was taking away the three. So here's Michigan State, Michigan, Saturday on Fox Prime Time Hoops. Another chapter in that Big Ten rivalry. Tyson Walker leading Michigan State in the showdown versus Michigan. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on Fox on the Fox Sports app. I tell you, that game had like 14,000 fans the first time they played. Michigan State completely dominated. I think they won by 19. Yeah. How can the Wolverines get it done in Ann Arbor? Wyoming now has ran out to their biggest lead of the game at 10. And Utah State needed to burn a timeout. And looks like there's going to be an away from the ball foul. As Walters. As Walters and Sacco playing physical down inside the paint, trying to get positioning. People don't know how physical it is down inside the paint. Footwork, elbows going everywhere. Yeah, refs have been calling it pretty tight so far. I like it. Utah State to inbound. Looking over the top. Oh, Johnson. And what's the call? That's that's a blocking that's foul. A, yep, it looked like Richie, he was probably in the restricted area. Bang, bang, call. Well, even if he's not, the defender has to have be fet. Uh, seat have to be, my, my words are all mixed up. Feet have to be set. <laughs> See, his feet have to be set when that last foot plants. Oh, and Richie. For Isaac Johnson. It so were like his feet set when Johnson planted that last foot? That's the question. To me, it looked like he might have gotten there on time, and his feet were outside of the restricted area. So, tough call there, tough break. Fouls against Caden Powell, and that's his third. He just got back into the game. Wow. So, a gamble there by Linder. To the line is Johnson, and he misses it. That takes away some length. Caden Powell, 6'10". Does a great job down inside the paint. Oh, here we go. Griffin with a mismatch. Going to see more of Koyanets down inside now. Seven-footer. They get it in the high Number post. 15 for Wyoming. Griffin. Oh, wow, what a block there. Went right into the big Matt Johnson's chest. And Johnson was having absolutely nothing of it. Look at this. Straight up verticality. That's textbook right there. 
Walters going one-on-one. -on -one. Good defense. Battle inside. And the big boys are banging around. And there is Koyanets again drawing another foul. Simply out-hustling the other team, Richie. He's had a couple of those plays. Well, he's, he's going to have to play off the bench quite a bit here with Powell being in foul trouble. He does yep. a good job playing hard. You know, he's a sophomore. He's still developing. Transfer from Nebraska, originally from Lithuania, where he played on multiple national teams. But he comes from a basketball family now. His, both his parents played at UNC Wilmington. And he had a game against New Mexico off the bench. Pretty good game where he had five rebounds. But he's going to give you everything he got. He shoots over 50% from the field. So that second foul, he's got to go to the bench, and Osibor is in for Johnson, who committed it. And what's the call here? Another loose ball foul to just get knocked out of bounds. So Utah State it is to find a way foul. to stop the bleeding. And, I, and I, what I really think they're missing is scoring down inside the paint. We're used to seeing yep. Osibor, number one, the best scorers in the Mountain West, just dominate down inside. He's not getting many touches. He's got two points on the night, just two field goal attempts. Wyoming's doing such a great job of keeping the ball out of his hands. And you see Manuel fronting him, sitting in front of him, making it difficult. Oh, that's a switch right through the middle of the net by Ian Martinez. Quickly the other way, though, are the Cowboys. Manyao looking for a guard to get it. They'll reset. Griffin, he's got a mismatch. Will he use it? A little bit of indecision for the Cowboy offense right now. Now they get into it. This is the guy to score. How about points. the start of this guy right now? I mean, this is a guy who just had his career high less than a couple weeks ago at the Air Force. Had 25 points. He's in for a big night, it looks like, Richie. And they need him. Ball's left. That's off. Rebound to the Cowboys. And they're still running. Trying to put the pedal to the metal here. Pull back three, Griffin. That's his 300 career three-point shot. And it comes at a very opportune time here for the Cowboys as they're trying to run the Aggies right out of the building. is going to have something to say about that, though, as he comes right back. Not so fast, he says, as he converts the M1 inside. A little bit of a back and forth. Wyoming's Wenzel to the basket. He has 12 points. And then the three-point shot by Griffin. That's a stare down three. It's the second time we've seen that tonight. Well, Brendan Wenzel has been absolutely on fire here. He has been aggressive from the opening tip. He's got 12 points already for the Wyoming Cowboys, the San Antonio, Texas native, transferred over here from Utah. And, uh, you know, coming into this game, Richie, you think Griffin, you think Cox, but sometimes those third guys are the main X factors here, and they determine the outcomes of games. And Wenzel is doing all he can to carry Wyoming to a potential victory over uh, the number one He's team. been on fire the last three games, now four games. Two of the last three games he scored, he's averaging like 20 points per game, or at 20 points or more in those games. He's playing a ton of minutes, he defends hard. He's been shooting nearly 50% from three of those last three games. Shoot, he had a career high 25 at Air Force where he had six three-pointers in that game. So Wenzel could fill it up, and he's doing it at a great time here in the second half of Mountain West play. Osibor converted the N1. Now they're going to show a different look defensively, Richie, and it's going to leave a wide-open duck for Menya. Utah State came out in a 1-3-1. What's the, What that leaves available are the short corners, unless you can get there properly in your rotations, but a quick pass to the short corner and a big guy that can finish it, great job by Wyoming. Here's Brown trying to get back into things, and that's not going to go. And Sprinkle was very upset at his team. That's something they obviously discussed in the timeout. And to not execute defensively, that's not going to make the coach happy. A lot of misses inside. Now here comes Utah State with it. Oh, great giving up for a better shot there by Martinez. Excellent IQ play 
had a good look, gave it up to Brown, who's the hot hand for Utah State. So Utah State's Brown and Aduje now 10 of 13 from the field combined. The rest of the team is just 3 for 11. Griffin fires from way downtown. Almost. Here's false level on the attack for Utah State. They ran out of room. Another extra pass. This time from the other guard to the other guard. And inside, they finish again. It's good ball movement. Great yep. job by the Aggies moving the ball. When they move the ball around, they can be pretty darn dangerous. They're a team that when they get in transition, they're good. In the half court, when they go downhill, they're really good. When they come off ball screens and get the ball down inside of the big fella, they can be really effective on the offensive end. So you saw Sprinkle on the sideline directing traffic to that short corner, Rich. You talked about, oh, great look, but that's going to be a foul on the catch. But Sprinkle was pointing to that short corner, making sure they did not give up that dunk. Here's a look at Utah State on yeah, the Sacco up. Sacco, yep. Does a good job of cleaning up under the basket. They, they put him in positions to succeed, and that's what you want to do as an offensive team, as a teammate. You never want to put your teammate in a position to fail. And they do a great job of putting the ball right there in Sacco's hands at 6'11", where he's so good at finishing around the basket. 60% from the field down there. And Richie Osibor picked up his second foul there and not wanting to risk anything as Sprinkle. He'll take him out of the game and likely sit him for the next couple minutes as he does not want him to pick up his third foul. Well, I think I think Coach Sprinkle's team is, is doing a great job of weathering the storm. Now, look, they, they're getting out rebounded. They're getting beat down inside the paint. They're turning the ball over more than they're getting assists. And they're not shooting as well as Wyoming. They're still shooting over 50%. Utah State the bonus. Walters, but they're just not one and one. Yep. They're just not uh, converting in some of the ways they normally convert from. And uh, as a result, Wyoming is doing a great job on the offensive end. And I feel like they're doing a great job defensively. I keep saying it. They've done a great job on Osibor. And true to your point, Richie, they have done a good job weathering the storm. They are five of their last seven from the floor. They're attacking again. And now the Cowboys have numbers that they choose to use it, and Griffin will not. He'll slow it down. Griffin trying to direct traffic. They show him two bodies. Here's Cott. Around the corner. And they lose him. And Cott, slow start continues as he hasn't scored yet. But they get the offensive rebound. Here's the guy to shoot. But that one's off. <laughs> Rich, you saw that one get out of his hand early. Knew that one wasn't going down as soon as it let out of his hand. Rare miss there from Wenzel. They double Brown. Brown finds Matt inside. Good hands. Oh, and a good move there. Here is an offensive rebound. And one. Carson Templet crashing the glass and converting plus the contact. Little pump fake action. Great job by Sacco. Great hands to catch the ball he did and a second chance opportunity for Templin. Foul was on Manyao, who picked up foul number two. And I like this young freshman, Carson Templin. Six foot eight at a Fairview, Texas. Was an all-state player in Texas. High energy, he's a true freshman. Don't see a whole lot of true freshmen getting great playing time, especially on a team as good as Utah State. Oh, look at the ball die on the back of the rim there. Oh, you're right, Richie. The freshman putting in some excellent quality minutes. Only average is about seven and a half minutes per game. But that's what, oh, what a backdoor pass. Oh, my goodness! And the up posters is Cam Manuel. And Darius Brown right back at him. On the two for one. Doesn't even give the Cowboy crowd time to celebrate that extremely nasty highlight dunk. Now the Cowboys will try and calm down and hold for the final shot. What a sequence there, Richie. Griffin in ISO land. He's got Brown on him. Griffin, the switch. Here he goes. Beat the buzzer, no good, and... Walters got it! Mason Walters beats the buzzer. And that punctuates an impressive half from the Wyoming Cowboys.
Wyoming looked really good this half. Offensively, doing a great job. Uh, moving the ball, getting appropriate shots, out rebounding. Look at this put back by Walters. You never give up. He let go of that ball with about two tenths of a second left. He was able to complete the play. Everybody goes in the locker room happy for the Cowboys. That right there, Richie, is what I would call an elite way to close the half as Wyoming trying to knock off the number one seeded Utah State Aggies in the conference. Still lots of work to do here, but it's getting good here in the Arena Auditorium here in Laramie. Don't go away. Second half of basketball just about to get underway here as Wyoming holds a four-point lead. Trying to knock off the number one team in the Mountain West. And there's your leading scorers right there. Brown leading the way for the Aggies. And I tell you, Wyoming did such a great job of taking care of the ball. Only three turnovers in the first half. And all three of those were in the first five minutes. And of course, Wenzel is the main cook in the kitchen for Wyoming as of now. He's got the ball in his hands. There's Cott, who's only attempted one shot, scoreless, but he makes a good pass there. Nice twirling pass to Wenzel. And crashing in there to try and create an extra possession is Manyow. It'll be Utah State's ball, but good, good hustle nonetheless. It's a great job here. I, I like this play by Manyow. He's just such an active young player, just a freshman true freshman at that just it's a great job probably the best offensive rebounder for the Cowboys now the Aggies got better shooting the ball they struggled early on and they made three of their last four threes but look, they're still trying to pump it down inside of the big fella who basically has been neutralized by Wyoming so far in this game and something to note here Manyow did not start the game but head coach Linder is putting him in to start this second half he likes the energy and the hustle that he has brought to the table Oh, oh, man, Osaborne, you don't see that very often. Missed opportunity for Utah State. They like to push the ball. They like to pump it down inside. Two areas where Wyoming is, is what I'm worried about in this contest. Just can't convert. It, I mean, points in the paint have really been dominated by Wyoming. It, Ten of their last 15 points in the first half were in the paint for the Cowboys. Griffin with nine on the shot clock. He's going to have to work quickly. Bottled up. Fade away by Walters. Shot clock cheese. No panic. Knew where he was, knew how much time he had. And now Utah State is getting a little bit sloppy, Richie, as they're trying to get going and run out in transition like they want. We see Walters down inside for Wyoming, posting up. He fakes right, goes baseline. I like that turnaround mid-range, Jay. One of the focuses to win this game for Jeff Linder's squad was to stop Utah State's transition. We've seen them do a pretty darn good job of that here, particularly starting the second half. Isaac Johnson stretching the floor, 34% three-point shooter, and he knocks one down. And see, the Oregon transfer you're talking about, Johnson, just knocked yep. down that three. He's seven foot tall. Now, he's listed as a center. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Great oh, defensive play by yeah, Osibor inside. Now Utah State's got numbers. Finds the open man. Martinez fires away. No tie there, but Johnson gets it off the glass, and now it's only a one-point game. And what I was saying about Johnson is, on offense, he's like a four, because you have Osibor, mm -hmm. who's really four round one down inside, but on defense, he's going to guard the five man. There's Very it. versatile, and you have to respect his ability to shoot outside because he can knock down the three. Oh, and Wyoming can't take advantage of the cross mismatch, and they turn it over, and this is what you don't want to do against Utah State. Oh, look at that. Oh, yes, sir. Ripped his cookies right out of the jar, and insult to injury, he committed a foul after he got ripped. Foul on false left. Great block by Osborne, and that's such textbook. Straight up, playing with his chest, perpendicular to the floor. Good there, pass by Brown. Couldn't convert, but right, who's there? Logan Johnson, five points straight 
on two possessions. Can't forget about him. He'll play cleanup duty. He can knock down the three-point shot. When he's knocking down threes, by the way, because two possessions go, he knocked down a three. That opens up the floor and allows for more drives for Utah State and gets Osibor an opportunity to post up a little bit more. Powell back in, who started the game, but with that foul trouble, probably another reason why head coach Linder had Manuel start the game, or start the second half. Once again, Richie, when, when the teams, when the players are indecisive, they think about their shot, yeah. that's when they miss. Mm -hmm. Look at them doing a great job in Osborne, man. They're just sitting on them, making it difficult, clogging it up. Look, they're trying to force it down inside. Wyoming doing a great job of deflecting it, getting steals. And now it's a foul to go the other way. Look, every time they try to get the ball inside to support, he has not had many paint touches. They're fronting him. If you're three-quartering him, they've got two, three defenders around. Look, look at what Walters is. Walters is almost in front of him, trying to get around him. And then on the floor, you see defensively, Wyoming comes up with it. Yeah, they're really crowding Osibor, who's going to take a seat, get a breather right now. See if he can reset himself, and hopefully he's not getting in his own head over there. Sometimes players can, you know, they, they know how good they are. When Sometimes when they're having a bad game, the great players, Richie, they shake it off and they're able to get it going, even if they're having a bad game. So we'll see if Osibor is able to kind of come back and reassert himself and be the great player we know he is. There's another turnover and a nice dish there. Oh, smoke the dunk, looking for a foul. That he's not going to go. Oh, yes, he is going to get it. Uh, that's that where you came late, but it where came. Utah State can be lethal in transition. If you don't slow them down, if you don't stop them, this is the kind of action they get. Looks a little clogged. It's not much spacing there. But you get it to the big fella, Sacco. He, most of his, like half of his field goal makes this season have been dunks. They know exactly where to deliver the ball to him so he can hammer it home. And this is breaking news, Richie, from Wyoming. Four fouls on Caden Powell. That is huge. This means they're going to see a little bit more of Koyanets in the game if they feel like they need some more size. Well, now they're going to put Manyao back in the game. Well, Powell plays with such energy. He's great on the glass. He plays hard defensively. The second free throw, but gets his own rebound. And Richie, did it look to you like he? It's going to Wyoming. It's going to go to Wyoming. But did it? Did that look like a potential lane violation on the free throw shooter? He got in there fast and in a hurry. Did not see it that closely. Yes, yeah, got to hit the rim before the free throw shooter can enter the lane. So something to keep an eye on as well, Richie, is the look, sub that came in for Powell Manyao. He has two fouls. Look at Darius Brown the second. Not just a great point guard, but picking up full court defensively. This is a young man who was the big sky defensive player of the year at Montana State a year ago. Loves to play defense. Good pocket pass there. Aggressively is. Oh, <laughs> Walters in there just straight up smoked it. Can't ask for a better look than that. And those, Richie, if the game is close, those may come back to haunt you. Here's Brown trying to keep it going, and what else is new? Darius Brown, scorching. Brown, a, a guy who's a floor general. He's pass first. He's about over three and a half to one assist to turnover ratio. But as of late, he's become more of a scorer. Oldest player on the team, the only player on the team actually born in the 90s. I think the players give him a hard time for that. And he has Utah State with its first lead since it was 7-6. to six. And, oh, what a smart play there by Wenzel. And Sprinkle is very upset at the lack of discipline of the defenders leaping up in the air with the shot clock coming down. Darius Brown. Brown behind the ball screen. NBA three-point shot. Big time lead now for Utah State up three. Well, for Utah State, it's been all about Darius Brown, the second, the only player on this Aggies team that will be exhausting eligibility. He's been outstanding, four of five from the field, seven of nine overall, 18 points in this game so far. He has willed this team. And 
What's so impressive about him is he's a player that averages six and a half assists per game. It's seventh in the nation, but yet he is coming up big here from the scoring department in this contest so far. Well, Brown is one of those veterans that the, the rarity veteran who has been around since before the pandemic shutdown. He was a standout player at CSUN, and I covered his game when he played the my Santa Barbara Gauchos way back in 2020 when he was on the that standout CSUN team with Lamine Janay and Terrell Gomez, and he was a second team All Big West player during his time at CSUN. This is a guy who's been doing it for a while, and now he's the leader of this Utah State team. You know, what's crazy, too, is if you remember, Jim Herrick became an assistant coach under Mark Gottfried at CSUN. Yeah. And Darius Brown II had played fifth grade football with Jim Herrick's grandson. So Coach Herrick just casually was being a fan there in Pasadena, nearby where he lives, watching the game. Never knew he'd be coaching at CSUN. Saw Darius Brown II playing in high school. His first year as an assistant coach under Mark Godfrey, they brought Darius Brown II to be a freshman point guard. It's kind of crazy how things work out. Life is about connections. By the way, those free throws stopped a 9-0 run by Utah State, and Osibor once again frustrated as he has the ball taken away from him. On the attack again. Great pass into the corner. Caught. Cold so far, but not anymore. It was only a matter of time, Richie, before a quail caught. Got cooking. And it comes when Wyoming needed him the most. Listen to this crowd. Martinez got in there. Walters thought he got him clean, and by the way, so did this entire arena auditorium. But foul will be called on Walters, and here's a look at that nice pass to big shot caught. Baseline drive, baseline drift. Wenzel doing a good job. Cut gets the ball. Now, one of the areas of concern for Utah State was taking away their three-point shots, and no catch-and-shoot threes for Cut or Griffin. I think Utah State has done a fair job at that. But in this case, Cott didn't have just a, an easy catch and shoot. They went to defend it. Cott just used the shot fake to get his defender in the air, one dribble, and then knocked it down. So they're not just catching and shooting. A lot of these three-point shots for Wyoming, and they're 5 of 15 in this game, have come off the bounce as a result. Boy, both of these teams, Richie, have done a great job answering the heavyweight punches that each of the other teams have thrown. Just when you thought Utah State was about to take over, that 9 nothing run, you get that big shot from Cop. And that gives the momentum back to Wyoming briefly, but we've got a 50-50 game here, Richie. It's about to get good. Great back, back door. door. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Who else but Brendan Wenzel? That's just high IQ. Great pass by Walters. I don't know if that was a set play or if it was just Walters dribbling at his defender's rear end. Oftentimes, that's the cue to backdoor cut for your teammate. Here's a douche who's had a great game for Utah State. Brown probing. There he goes again. Wow, he's filling it up, isn't he? You know, he must know what we're talking about. Well, we had a nice conversation with him during shoot around. Both of us covered yeah, him sure when he was at CSUN. I think he made him happy, put a smile on his face. Oh. Wenzel fires a three. By the way, by the way, I mean, this guy is a straight-up competitor. The second I mentioned to him which game I was talking about where they played our team, he's like, oh, yeah, we won that game. <laughs> like, straight up, right out of his mouth, as if he was thinking about it the whole day. Well, Brown dropping dimes now. Oh, yeah. He's got his fingerprints all over this game. Nice shot there by Duje. <laughs> Wyoming's been able to respond to Utah State all night long. And got their biggest lead of the half at three. Here's Wenzel coming again. Shot clock's winding now. Oh, this is where Cott's going to take over. Here he goes. Into his dance. Step back. Oh, not quite. Here's the baseline drive. It's cut off. Aduje fires again. Almost. Cowboys trying to run. 
Uh-oh, Griffin. That's the catch and shoot that Coach Sprinkle was worried about. Advancing the ball, goes right to Griffin, no hesitation. Eyes the goal and knocks down the three. I mean, this has just been a treat of the game to watch, Richie. Stars are shining. A lot different from the first time they played, huh? Players are hustling. Fifty-five, fifty-five. Back cut by Wenzel. Griffin for three. Well, when Utah State went down to UNLV about a month ago, we saw something that we rarely ever see in college basketball. They were down four with eight and a half seconds to go. Darius Brown hits a three. While Greg Osborne is fouled away from the ball, the rarely seen five-point play to go ahead. And then UNLV missed this game-winning attempt to buzzer, and the Aggies absolutely stole a one-point win. You when do it. you ever see a five-point play to win a game, <laughs> ever? That's, that's, that puts a smile on your face, does it not? I mean, not for UNLV fans, not for the UNLV team, but just to see something special like that happen. Oh. Sh shut your eyes, running Rebels fans. If, you just, if you're watching this game, don't look. <laughs> well, Utah State is a team that's not a great three-point shooting team. I'd say that's probably their one weakness is they're slightly below average in that category. It's, it's Wyoming who's typically the better three-point shooting team. Well, the Aggies started 2-8 and eight from behind the arc. Since they are six for ten. They're six for eighteen overall. Eight for eighteen. There's a miss there, and here comes Great Osabor leading the break. Here's a Duje trying to work caught in the post. Thinks he's got a mouse in the house. And <laughs> well, he was right. Duje going right to the basket and score. Still waiting to see if they can find a way to shake Osibor free down low. Just five points on four field goal attempts. Here's Walters. He's been operating from the post all day. Patiently probing. Gets to his spot. And it almost looked like he was just going through progressions there. <laughs> He's probably worked on that move a hundred million times. Doing a great job playing out of the post for Wyoming. Speaking high of the post, action, yeah. Yep. Twirling, he moving around. Oh. And, oh, my goodness. I love gracious. his footwork. I love the way he uses his pivot foot. I like a Dujay's game. I mean, he can hit outside a little bit, hit one earlier from behind the arc. He's posting down inside. He's a pull up mid range guy, drives to the basket. Yeah, make no mistake. He was a very talented scorer coming over from Coastal Carolina. Not quite his role overall for Utah State. Oh, my goodness. Great Osipor with the rejection as Walters had a notion he probably regrets. Well, it's good spin. Walters is trying to do a little slide dribble. Lull him to sleep, go in middle, then spin to the baseline. But Osipor knows better. And I look, I, you know, we're, we're talking about how Osipor is not scoring the ball as he normally does, but he is doing other things to help his team compete here. Oh, someone lost a shoe. <laughs> and uh, I don't think Wenzel cares if he's got two shoes on, one sock on. Not a lot of slowing this guy down. Point blank miss for Utah State. Griffin with his head up. Cross court pass. And they'll slow it down and pull it out. Griffin orchestrating. Wyoming back in front. Walters going right back at Osipor. And this time it's blocked again by two guys. I think that was Isaac Johnson who got over there and, with the help. And that is Utah State's fifth block on the night. And I mean, Osipor doesn't really need help, but 
Johnson came and got it to him. Nice. That's what his teammate out. Two guys with great wingspan down there, 6'9 and 7 foot. Shot clock winding down. Griffin pulls and fires. Oh, look at that more hustle from Manuel. Freshman. And so two trees, again. two trees down there for the Aggies. Yep. Oh, Brown, uh, look at the look, defense. But, oh, That's man. what I love. Every time they try to get the ball to Osibor inside the paint, it's a big time struggle. Look at the look at the defense. The freshman Manuel plays with such hard motor energy. And, and Richie, I'd almost say it's unbelievable, but this is just what he does. It's been a big lift. Uh, they're doing a fantastic job of just being a magnet to Osibor, denying him the ball down inside the paint. Great job by the Cowboys. we got a ball game here, folks. So we want to take a second to say thanks to Tim Harkins, who retired at the end of January. Tim worked at the Sports Innovation Department since 1991. First is the assistant media relations director and then is the associate director of athletics for media relations and broadcasting local folks know tim to be always friendly helpful great at his job and a pleasure to be around thanks to tim and enjoy your retirement what a career yeah well here in laramie you know, we saw a, a game the first time around these guys played and it was a 24-point win for Utah State. But in this game, Wyoming has 10 more field goal attempts. And that's because they've forced 10 turnovers. They also have 10 offensive rebounds. They've scored 11 points off of Utah State's turnovers. And in their six made shots here in this half, five have been assisted playing team basketball. Now, Utah State doing a great job getting points off the bench. And there he is, Osibor, exactly what they needed, an exclamation point. That gives him his sixth and seventh points. And, Richie, that was an elite set play drawn out of the timeout by Sprinkle. I think they did a good job with that in trying to get him more involved. They're really missing that link right now, his production down inside the paint. Powell's back in with four fouls, and thought he shuffled his feet there. No call, but he misses the point-point shot. Utah State back in the lead out of the timeout. Uh-oh, they let him cook one-on-one. -on -one. Sees two bodies. Here's a Duje. He does it all, guy? man. He does it all. He has had a terrific game in this contest. Averages eight and a half points per game and has 18 in this contest. Eight of 12 from the field is the most impressive step. And at Coastal Carolina, he was a born scorer during his career there. He, Score double figures 32 times with a career 33. Here's that set play, getting great positioning yep. off the board, great positioning on Powell, and then Aduje beating his man off the bounce, going middle, in between three defenders to get to the basket. And you're right, a born score. Coastal Carolina was terrific in scoring the basketball. Good backdoor pass. Combs back in the game for head coach Linder. And caught is foul on the drive. Good game here, Richie. Getting down to the wire. Sixty-three to sixty here, Utah State with a slight advantage here. And you've heard of the all conference team. You've heard of the all tournament team, but have you ever heard of the Mountain West All-Valentine's Day team? Mm. Take a look at some of those first-team All-Lovebirds here gracing our list here on February 14th. Well, I like that. Wink Adams, Bo Becker. You're going you're gonna to take a stab at Valentine's last name? I want to say a Zundu. And you got Zach Chapel down there and, of course, Jeff Hart. That's, that's, that's an obvious one. So you're going to the chapel. Yep, yep. Got to get, yeah, you know, you know. And Coach Dave Rose, BYU, back when they were in the Mountain West Conference. I'm almost waiting for the Lion King, Can You Feel the Love in the Air Tonight song to start playing from these speakers. <laughs> and uh, good move there, but he traveled. Took a little bit of an extra step. And turnover on... Uh, Manuel. Could be costly. Utah State's, uh, they're coming around here. They've got two guys, wow. Brown with 20 points, and Aduje with 18. That's two guys in double figures. And Rich, as we get close to crunch time here, and 
and now we have a trouble on the other side. This is an important stretch of minutes here for the Wyoming Cowboys in this particular point in the game because if you notice right now, their best player is not on the floor. Sam Griffin is on the bench. So, very critical stretch here for Wyoming. Teetering on the edge here. Let's see if Walters can keep up his good work. Also board not giving up ground. Forces that one. And what's the call here? And a Pierce Johnson is frustrated for Utah State. Big number 20. I'm not sure that's who they called the foul on. It, I think it is who they called the foul on, Isaac Johnson. Okay. Loose ball foul had to be away from the ball. Not exactly sure where he committed that foul. They were already almost going the other way. His cot's got a switch. Not looking to be aggressive. At least as of yet. Wenzel is looking to be aggressive. Runs out of room. Has to pull a fadeaway up. As Darius Brown jumped over the top of a Wyoming Cowboy, but it will be one of the Cowboys who draws the foul. Mason Walters. It's Walters. On yep. the rebound. Yeah. So good job by Darius Brown inventing a foul call, essentially. The Aggies have really come alive here and, and shooting the ball really well, 44% in the game. But their 10 turnovers have kept the door cracked for Wyoming. Wyoming has seven steals in this game. It's the eighth time this season. Look at Darius Brown, the second. Such a guy that is so good at distributing the ball is finding creases and opportunities to attack the basket. And remember what I, ju I just said a couple seconds ago about this being a critical stretch. Now they're down by five. Oh, no, and that's going to help them out a lot right there. Boy, that is a momentum-changing foul on a three-point attempt by Aduje. Let's see if he got him. There's Brown just attacking off the ball screen. Great job turning the corner. And then on this three-point shot, Aduje was called for the foul, said he got him in the leg. He did. He did. He got him on the right leg as Wenzel was up in the air. Something else to keep an eye on now is Griffin back in the game. 17 fouls for Utah State. So Wyoming is going to be going to the line on every foul call from this point forward. No, oh, can't get the second one to go. Well, it's not such a bad thing for Wyoming to be going to the foul line if you're a Wyoming fan. There's 75% from the free throw strike, and they make 16 free throws a game. That's good for 35th in the country. Wyoming's got to make their move quickly here. Utah State, 6-0 in games decided by five points or less. So they definitely know how to play in crunch time. Martinez on the attack. Great job. Good adjustment in the air. That foul looks like it's going to be on Manyow, if I'm not mistaken. Watch how Martinez turns the corner, moving off the ball, and the great delivery. Just great job of curling. I think, I'm not sure what happened before that, but he found the crease, curled into the paint. That's high IQ basketball. You spend so much time as a basketball player on the floor, off the ball, you know, all these skills trainers and, and, and coaches, all that's great and all, but you all, it seems like the only focus when you have the ball in your hands. It takes being a part of a team to find out and realize how do you play off the basketball because 98% of the game, you are off the ball. Martinez at the line. He's an 83% free throw shooter. He's been around the block from Costa Rica, played high school basketball in California, then went to Utah and then came over for, uh, from Maryland. Usually he's their second or third option scoring, but Utah State has got it from a lot of different players thus far in this game. They're up by five, matching their biggest lead of the half. Wyoming switch it down to, the paint. Yep, there's a switch. Wyoming's been able to respond all day, and this time it's not... Oh, just left it short. Oh, good rebound. And a follow-up by Manyao. But you saw there 
Walters got it in the post and knew he wasn't going against Osibor. Just left it short, but his teammate helped him out. I think I fall in love with Manuel. Cam Manuel might be one of my new favorite players in the Mountain West. It's fitting. It's Valentine's Day, right, for me to fall in love. <laughs> that is a great, great call, Richie. <laughs> Just a freshman, led his team to a state championship last year. Look at him, competing with Osibor. Ball goes to him and dunks over the seven-footer. First team All-State player in the state of Missouri. His high school team had a 30-2 record. Staley High School Richie, in I Kansas can, City, Missouri. I can tell you something you won't love about your new favorite player. That's his fourth foul. And... Richie, if Wyoming comes back and wins this game, I don't really care what the stat sheet says. Yeah, uh, uh, Brendan Wenzel has been the, the guy, but he may be the MVP of Wyoming if they come back and win this. And there's a nasty... Ball didn't hit the rim. Brown's got a fire. I, I thought it didn't hit the rim. I thought that would be a shot clock violation, but... They, they rule really it. I guess it did. Here is Cott trying to get going. And oh, Great he, defense. He used his right hand on the left side. Exposed the ball and allowed Utah State to get yet another block. And Martinez, oh, and he gets the roll! <laughs> Ian Martinez! It's just beautiful. He's crazy athletic. Look at the defensive stop by Martinez. And as every great team does, reward him with the ball on the offensive end. There was two shot fakes there. One jab, one shot fake in the and one to get Utah State over the top, up five once again. That was a veteran NBA move there, using the pump fake to get the defender in the air. And it's almost always a foul when you get the defender in the air to come down like that. He wasn't even supposed to play this year. He was a two-time transfer. I think it was in, uh, what, early December when the NCAA overturned that so that if you yeah. were a two-time transfer, you could play right away. Waivers cleared, and boom, he's in action. Second leading score behind the big fella inside. And now Wyoming is starting to run out of bullets here as Wenzel, the hottest hand in the gym, missed another three right now, and this is a big possession here defensively for Wyoming. It is because you got a media timeout coming. You want to feel good about it when you go in inside the huddle. Utah State could really have a psychological effect with a score here. Brown. Aduje. Not quite. Osibor tipping around the rebound. Good hustle by Cott to get out of his hands. Now they need to score here and they need to score badly. Griffin to the basket and he's got it. But he's got to get back on defense here as the Aggies are trying to run again. Looking for Osibor down low, double teamed, and they're going to call a he did a good job. late foul. And if that's on Powell, we'll see who it's on. Great job by Osibor to split the traffic inside. But how about Griffin? You talked about the shot that they needed on that possession. Look at him turning the corner and getting to the cup. Four-point game here, Utah State up by four, and the foul committed was on Mason Walters, who picks up his fourth. It was not on Caden Powell. That would have been his fifth. So the big man is allowed to stay in the game as of right now. And now look at this. Mentioned it earlier in the broadcast, Utah State is undefeated this year in clutch time games, decided by five points or less. So they've been here, they've done that. Wyoming's got a tall task to overcome. But now look at that. They're 6-0 this season against game decided by eight points or less. So you got that dynamic going on. Interesting, right? Interesting, very interesting. Well, what I like is that halftime, Wyoming was really winning the, battle, uh, winning the battle of the boards. They were doing a great job inside the paint. That, that started to change a little bit. Utah State is now winning the battle inside the paint. Utah State has locked in defensively, holding Wyoming to just 31% from the field in this half. And for the game, you have Utah State shooting 55%. Why is it so good here in the second half? Well, 16 of their 31 points here in the second half have been in the paint.
That's half their points overall. We still have some time left. Those high percentage shots in the paint go a long way in upping your field goal percentage. And Osibor splits one of two. So that gives Wyoming a little bit of life here as they need all the points they can get. Cotter's been bottled up today. Only three points. Powell, nice cross court pass to Griffin. And Wentzel now doing it all. He's on the offensive glass, not just a score. Big time extra possession here. Here's that. Oh, a crossover. A wicked crossover. But he's blocked at the rim. Sacco. Great. This is smart basketball by Darius Brown, the second. Sees that he doesn't have numbers. Got a little bit of a lead here. Time is running out. Pulls it out smartly. And let's run some half court offense. Another big possession for Utah State and Wyoming here. They blow up the screen. Brown wanted it. And Osipor is out of control, but the refs are going to call a block. They're going to call a block. Should be one and one free throws if that's the case. Look at Cott. You talked about this crossover. That was beautiful. Tim Hardaway ish. But unfortunately, he ran into two Giants down inside. And then Osipor, big fellas, versatile to the post. A block there, I should give him two free throws. And that also gives Caden Powell his fifth foul, and he is done for the day. He's been big for them, Powell, in this game. I, just his defensive presence, his length down inside. Say it's his fifth foul. Yep. He's only played about eight minutes in the game, but I just feel like he's made an impression in the time that he's been in there. Yeah, that's, and that's a tough call on him. He's, he was trying to move his feet, but dealing with that man down there, I mean, that is just no easy task to ask of anybody. And Osibor by far, is the strongest person in the gym. Back to the line. And he misses the front end. He leaves the door cracked for Wyoming. Once again. Both these teams still in the bonus. Everybody's getting one-on-one -on -one free throws on fouls. Cott got to a spot last time down. Step back by Cott. No fear. Oh. Another offensive rebound by Wenzel, but he loses it. He lost the ball. He's trying to hit Griffin in the corner. Oh, that's a tough break. Great effort with the offensive rebound. Ah. And he knows it. Mad at himself. But can't be mad at the effort, Richie. Just the result. This is the guy you want with the ball in his hands if you're Utah State. Shot clock winding down, trying to direct traffic. The Duje on the attack, spins around. Tough shot by Duje, not going to go, but Osibor on the offensive glass and puts it down. 1,000 career points. The great one strikes again. Griffin is blocked at the rim. Who will it be? It's going to be Wyoming ball. Osibor is pleading with the referees to review it. And we're under two minutes, and it looks like that's exactly what the ref's going to do. But look at this superhuman grown man put back by Osibor, flexing his muscles. So as the officials review here, it gives an opportunity for the coaches to calm their players down. As you see, Osibor, what a career he's had so far, just a junior. Coach Sprinkle has been in this position before. They've won 20 games. As a matter of fact, it's like the 33rd time Utah State has won 20 games. What a great program. A lot of tradition and history here. But Coach Sprinkle talking to his guys about closing out this game, just giving any last-minute instructions he can, letting his team know that if you see the press, you still have three timeouts. If you see the look here, you guys be the judge. I mean, that just went right off of Griffin's hand. That should be Utah State's basketball. I don't think that was off Osibor or anybody from Utah State. Now, if you're Jeff Linder in the Cowboys of Wyoming, you have to find ways to get stops and score in a hurry. I think you're going to have to see some full court pressure. Now, if they have the ball back, he's going to have an ATO and after timeout play that they can run to get a quick shot. But it's not. It's going to Utah State. The officials had called it. Wow. So expect to see some full court pressure. And uh, 
expect to see them try to pressure, trap, get a deflection, see if they can get something going and get some quick baskets and get right back in their press down seven points here. So the official did overturn it, and Osipor got his wish. And remember earlier, Richie, when we were talking about, we saw Osipor on the bench trying to sort of shake off his bad start, and he's done a great job in this second half of shaking it off as now we have a kickball. But that, that's what the great ones do, Richie, and true to his name. Great Osibor, what a great name. Uh, that's, that's the name of a strong man right there. Aggies will have it. And Wyoming choosing not to foul right now. Brown just running around, playing ring around the Rosie, trying to milk down the clock for all it's worth. This may be the dagger right here. Here's Brown. In the corner, Martinez. And that's the dagger in the heart of the Wyoming Cowboys. Great job by Utah State. Moving the basketball. It's a close game at halftime. They come out here in the second half, move the ball, get other players involved, knock down this three-point shot. Look at this by Darius Brown. Breaks down the defense, he sees the help, and then boom. Such great vision. Hitting Martinez right in the fingertips into his shot. Darius Brown in full control when the ball is in his hands. That's the guy that everyone knows is the leader on this team. He came over from Montana State with his head coach and with great, great Osibor. The younger players look up to his veteran leadership. And Richie, those are the kinds of plays that that veterans make knew exactly where he was going with the basketball, didn't force up a questionable shot, trusted his teammate, and he made him look great. Well, he's been scoring all night long, so they take him away. He's got the vision to pump it out to somebody else. Great defense. Wyoming's got to move quickly, and no, Sir Ritos. I love what Alcibor's done. You know, the casual fans are going to look at the box score and say, he only had 10 points. Man, look at what he's doing on defense. He's had multiple blocks in this game. That's four blocks now for Osibor. What an impression he's had down inside the paint on the defensive end of the floor. Season high, eight blocks combined for Utah State. Wentzel got a look. Oh, they needed that. The heartbeat is alive on Valentine's Day. All right, so three-point shot made. Coach Linder's going to burn a timeout. That should give him one more timeout. Expect them to come out here with full court pressure again. Uh, look for a trap. The objective would be to try to get Utah State to not throw the ball in the middle third of the court, but try to get them to throw the ball in one of the corners. They call that the coffin corner. If you can get the ball at the coffin corner, you have a sideline as an extra defender, you have a baseline as an extra defender, and then two more defenders can trap it. And by doing so, you take away the release guy, you take away the guy who might be open under the basket, boom, you either get a deflection or a steal, or they have to burn a timeout. Utah State does have two of those left. And like I said, Wyoming is down to their last. So you see Coach Sprinkle in the huddle. You know, I'm sure they've worked on several different uh, 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 pressure releases against full court man press. So expect to see something new maybe that we haven't seen so far in this game and at a critical time. So Richie with... Both teams being in the one and one. You could strategically try and gamble here for Wyoming. Maybe try and find the, the most questionable free throw shooter and see if they can get a miss on the front end of a one and one. Well, look at this. You got two, three guys out of bounds for Utah State. This is a unique lineup. Sometimes you see all five, it looks like a football play. Wyoming should have no idea what's coming. This is really created by Coach Sprinkle. And Sprinkle took Osibor out of the game because he hasn't been their best free throw shooter. And Great job. The yep. That's a really good job by the Aggies of breaking that press and now getting to the free throw line. That is the, I believe, eighth team foul for Wyoming. That should be one and one. So if Utah State can convert these free throws, just keep solidifying the victory here. Pretty so, good free throw shooting team at 73%. But false Lev is the guy to foul here if you're Wyoming. He is a 59% free throw shooter. 
Oh, he got that one to rattle in. First one's always the hardest. Look for Wyoming. They have to get shots in a hurry, and they can't all just be two. Now, if Utah State's going to give them two, is great. Take it. Dribble handoffs on the wing oftentimes, and top of key can lead to open three-point shots. And only one timeout for Wyoming, so they have to move quickly here. 15 seconds separating shot clock and game clock. Got to go fast. Griffin looking for somewhere to go. And he draws a foul, so that's going to stop the clock and send Griffin to the free throw line. That's just 18 fouls on Utah State, but shooting foul. So they'll knock down, or they'll get two free throws here to try to knock down. It's a three-possession game right now. Even if he uh, makes these two free throws, seven-point game, still three three possession. For what so, it's worth, the foul was on Ian Martinez, and that was his fourth. Griffin is an excellent free throw shooter. Matter of fact, he's fourth in the Mountain West in free throw percentage. And you expect him to make two here. Now that makes it an eight-point game. Sam Griffin came over from Tulsa, also played at UT Arlington, native of Miami, Florida. Second free throw, good. Wyoming still has one timeout. Utah State has two. See, that's where you don't want the ball. Good job by Utah State getting the ball in that middle third right there. They don't want to foul Brown. But time is winding down, and they may be forced to go. Brown splits the defense. You got a foul if you're Wyoming. So I don't know what they're doing. There's a, well, that looked like a foul that they didn't call. And now, Falslip gets the layup. And Richie, I'm not sure why they didn't foul quickly there. But here goes Griffin. And there's going to be an easy basket down inside. Yeah, I thought Wyoming may have missed an opportunity not fouling sooner. Yeah, I agree. And it looks like they're going to take their final timeout. But this has looked really good for Wyoming coming back from a difficult loss in the time that they played down in Logan. As you see now, Utah State's upcoming schedule doesn't get any easier. I really liked the resolve of Utah State in the second half. Man, they played well. But look, they got to go on the road to Colorado State. And they got San Diego State at home. So the next two games are against teams that have a really good net ranking, teams that probably will be in the NCAA tournament. And then they finish it off with Fresno State Air Force and San Jose State before they get into Mountain West Tournament. And Wyoming, they have a pretty difficult schedule as well. I mean, you, you can overlook a team like San Jose State all you want. Don't do that. They're they are sneakily good at home and they play very, very hard. But then you got to go at Nevada. Then you have here Boise State and UNLV and then at Colorado State. That is a beast of a schedule. This is right one there. of the best conferences in the nation. There's, there's no doubt that every game you play is going to be a beast. Even if it's a team at the bottom of the standings, it's still going to be a tough matchup. These teams are too good. This league is too great. And it continues to get better and better again. 2013, they sent five teams to the NCAA tournament this year. It's looking it's like it may six. be close yeah, to that it again, could be six. It? Could be six this year. Shall see how it all plays out at the end. The bubble watch, all that, we'll be seeing that as time goes. But right now, this Utah State team, they're going to come out of here victorious, and they're going to keep sole possession of first place in the Mountain West. A loss here, as we had mentioned earlier, would have had them in a three-way tie with New Mexico yeah. and San Diego State. Yeah. But they're going to keep that. It's a great road win. And they're going to advance on the road going 6-3 and three now under Danny Sprinkle and, and in give, Mountain West play. Give, give Wyoming credit. They, they played extremely hard. They left it all out there on the floor, hustling all over the place. But... You well, have to play absolutely perfect to beat a team like this, even if it's in your house. Utah and State's got dudes, man. Yep, they, they got sure players. Do. They got talent. 13 new guys. They've gelled well together. Coach Sprinkle was talking about how this has got to be one of the nicest teams in the country. They butted together so well and just great young men. Yeah, it's just unfortunate that the efforts of Manyau are going to result in a loss, but he was spectacular for Wyoming. How about Darius Brown the second, though? 22 points, 
eight rebounds. And he's your point guard, getting eight boards. Got a foul right away, and now they foul. Yeah, you, you, we've, we've talked a lot about Darius Brown, and the leadership is, is, you know, one of those qualities that you just love to see from really anyone. But someone like that, with all the experience that he has, it's, it's just when you have a player like that on your roster and you get into the trenches and close games, having a player like Brown on your team just gives you a sense of calm that our best players got things under control. And again, he's the only player on this team that's going to exhaust his eligibility. This Utah State team could look awfully similar next year. And you don't see that in college basketball a ton these days. So Duje is going to go to the free throw line. Hasn't attempted a free throw yet. And makes it look easy. And that point right there ties his season high on the season. Cool, calm, and collected. Knocks those two free throws down. Last gas for Wyoming here. Griffin, step back three, and he hits it. Back to your press. Four seconds left. Foul right away. And it looked like, look like, oh, man. And it looked like Cott was trying to foul, but a couple seconds. I'm sure Cott would make the case that I fouled him right away. Two or two seconds. <laughs> I, I, don't, think extra I, don't seconds think they, I don't think it was wanted, that foul. I, I think they were wanting to run out the clock. Game's decided. Yeah. Well. But Brown the second gets to add on to that point total. A true floor general, a pass first guy, one of the best assist getters in the entire country, top 10. And he comes out here and he scores 23 points now, eight boards. Love it. Five assists. He had 11 assists in the first time these two teams played. He's showing that he can do other things in the court. He is a complete, well rounded player. And he knocks down. His 24th point, matching his season high. And that's it here from Laramie, Utah State, the number one team in the Mountain West. They took those punches that Wyoming threw at them all night long. And they just happened to be the team to throw the final punch. Wyoming, give them credit. They scratched, they clawed, they hustled. But Utah State, the veterans, they don't lose in clutch situations. And they proved that they are the poised team going forward in the Mountain West. Last year, the Mountain West saw San Diego State make a deep, deep run, almost win the national championship in the NCAA tournament. Danny Sprinkle's got a team, I think, that can make a deep, deep run this March as well. Really excited about what he's built here in such a short time in year one. Great job by Utah State. They're in full control, first place now in the Mountain West Conference. Boy, what a game here that we got to sit and witness with both of these teams going back at each other. So, that will do it here for our Valentine's Day coverage from Laramie, Wyoming. And for Richie Schuler and our entire Fox Sports crew, I'm Derek Clark, signing off here from Wyoming. Thank you for watching Mountain West Basketball right here on FS1. Have a great rest of your evening.